Hi, this is Brand Stady. Today I'm going to talk about reading a custom XML part in Word VBA using the custom XML parts property. When reading custom XML parts in Word VBA, we have a couple of options. The first one is the custom XML parts property. From here we can access the custom XML parts that are by default part of a Word document, and these are the doc, app, and cover page properties. And we can also access the parts in the custom XML folder. The other option is to use the Microsoft XML library. And the advantage of this is that we can navigate the whole document. I'll discuss this approach in another screencast. Today I'm just going to focus on the custom XML parts property. I have already created a Word document that contains a custom XML part and the VBA code to read that part. Let's first look at the custom XML part in the Open XML Package Editor Power Tool for Visual Studio. I'll open Visual Studio, drag over the file, open the custom XML folder, and open the first item, format it. This part contains information about styling for some custom content controls. We can see we have a root element of content control styling. We have child elements of CC style. We have an attribute named type, and we have text content. This text content corresponds to a word character style, which will be applied to the custom content control. Before moving on to reading this part in Word VBA, I want to briefly discuss namespaces. A namespace is a way to qualify a name so that it does not conflict with other names. And when reading a custom XML part, we need to specify what namespace the elements and attributes are in. A fully qualified name contains the namespace and the local name. For example, the local name for this element is CC style. Generally, a namespace is declared as a URL string. There are three namespace designations. There's the no namespace, the default namespace, and a namespace declared with a prefix. For this custom XML part, there is no namespace defined, so all elements and attributes are in no namespace. We could include a default namespace, and we can do so as follows. I have now defined a default namespace as openxmldeveloper.org, and that puts this root element and all descendant elements in the default namespace the attributes are still in no namespace. If we want to put the attributes in a namespace, then we need to define a name with a prefix and prepend the attribute names with that prefix. Let's go ahead and do that. I have now assigned a prefix of oxdev to the namespace openxmldeveloper.org and use that prefix to prepend all the elements and attributes. When you look at other Word document parts, all elements and attributes are defined this way. I'll handle this case later. First, I want to tackle reading the custom X small part where there is no namespace associated with the elements and attributes. As you recall, that part looks like this. Before we leave the package, I'd like to point out one other item. As I mentioned earlier, there are three custom XML parts that are included by default as part of a Word document. Two of these, the doc and app properties, are contained in the folder doc props and are listed as app.xml and core.xml. Let's close this and open the document in Word. I'll click on the Developer tab, Visual Basic. Here I've written a subroutine that reads in the custom XML part and then writes out the contents to the immediate window. In a real world scenario, of course, you would do something more useful with the data once you have read the custom XML part, but this will show you the general approach of getting the data you need. At the top here, I've declared some strings to hold the namespace and the namespace prefix. Next, there are declarations for variables to hold the custom XML parts and the individual nodes. So first we get the custom XML parts from this document using the custom XML parts property and assign it to the parts variable. As you know by now, there are three custom XML parts that are included by default and also are 
custom XML part. We loop through each part in that collection. The first thing we do is we get the namespace for that custom XML part using the namespace URI property. In our case of no namespace, this property will return an empty string. We next check if we have an empty string corresponding to that no namespace part. And I'm going to set a breakpoint here and let's run it. First time through, we get one of the default custom XML parts that has a namespace of core properties. Second time, we get the extended properties default part. Third time, we get the cover page props default part. Fourth time through, we should get our known namespace part, which is what we have here. Now that we have the no namespace part, let's step through this if block. Here we use the select nodes method with an XPath expression to return all nodes that meet the path expression. If you're not familiar with XPath expressions, there are multiple websites that offer tutorials on how to use them. Basically, an XPath expression allows you to navigate an XML document. In our case, we want to get all nodes that have a root element name of content control styling and a child element name of CC style. After executing that statement, we then loop through all nodes in that node list and write out to the immediate window the various node properties. I'm going to move this immediate window up a little bit so we can see the contents better. The first value we print out from the node is the node value. In that CC style, type customer, it has emphasis as text content. If we print out the node text, we get emphasis. Next, we write out the attribute count. In our case, we only have one attribute, which is named type. Then we loop through all attributes. In our case, we only have one. In your custom XML part, you may have more. And the first thing we write out is the base name for that attribute using the item and base name property. And we see that it is type. That attribute text is customer. And that's all there is to reading a custom XML part in no namespace. We can quickly move through the rest of the nodes, print out those values to the immediate window, and we're done. I'm going to clear the immediate window, go back up here, and stop the debugger. If you just wanted to get one node, for example, the node that contains the attribute type of customer, you could do this in the select nodes method. We can do so as follows. At type specifies that we want an attribute named type equal to the following string, customer. We have now defined a path expression where we want to get all nodes that have a root element of content control styling, a child element of CC style, a child element that has a attribute name type of value customer. Let's set a breakpoint here and print out all those values. We'll run it. Node value is as we expect, CC style type is customer, text is emphasis, print out the node text, emphasis, attributes one, attribute name type, and attribute value customer. And that's all of the nodes in our collection. Let's next move on to reading in a custom XML part that has a defined namespace. I'll stop the debugger, close the window, close Word, don't need to save the changes. I'll open Visual Studio again, drag over the Word document, open the custom XML folder, open the first item, format it. When you are reading in a custom XML part that has a default namespace such as this, or when you are reading in a part that has a namespace defined with a prefix, such as this, 
Both are handled the same way in the VBA code. Let's change the custom XML part to use the default namespace and read in that part. I'll change this back. We now have a default namespace of openxmldeveloper.org. I'll save this, close it, and reopen the document in Word. In order to read the part with a namespace, we need to define what that namespace is. So I'll define it here as a string, s and s custom is equal to HTTP open XML developer dot org. Again, we get the custom XML part collection using the custom XML parts property. Dropping down, we loop through each part in that collection. We get the namespace associated with that part. Now that we are searching for a part with a namespace, we check to see if it matches our namespace using the string compare method, which is here. If it does match, we get the prefix associated with that namespace using the parts namespace manager lookup prefix method. Word assigns a prefix to each namespace, so the default namespace will have a prefix. Also, if we define our own prefix in the custom XML part, such as OXDEV, that prefix will be assigned a new value. So we get that assigned prefix from Word. Next, we use the select nodes method again with an XPath expression. In this case, we need to search the fully qualified name, that is the prefix of the namespace, colon, and the element name. Following that, we loop through each node in the node list and write out the node properties. Let's set a breakpoint here and run it. If we look at the prefix assigned by Word for our part's default namespace, we see that it is NS0. The number of nodes returned by select nodes is 4. And if we step through the node properties, we can see that we are reading our custom XML part with the default namespace. And that's all there is to it. That's all there is to reading a custom XML part with no namespace, a default namespace, or a namespace defined with a prefix. Thank you for watching. This is Brand Stady. If you need help with your OpenXML project, please feel free to contact me at brandstady at gmail.com. See you next time.